There are very few areas of technology that change as rapidly as security. The essence of Agile is the capacity to understand quickly when things change or when things have to change. That really is the essence of what security is. Risks change all the time. Threats change all the time. Organizations are growing right, left, and center. And as they implement new initiatives, as they partner with new organizations, as they move into new geographies, their risks change, and so their security needs change. Agile allows them to have the capability and sort of the habit of thinking quickly of how they can componentize some of the decisions they, they want to make and how they can respond most effectively and efficiently to the types of problems that they're going to see that can be impacted by security. So I think Agile is a very natural fit for the security problem. It sounds simple, and I think that if you execute the same way every time, you can make it consistent. But I don't know if I'd call it simple. When I think of the sophisticated nature of the threat, when I think about the organized nature of the attacker these days, it changes it from being a simple risk-based management approach to one that has to be much more nuanced. I have to understand a lot about all the different components that I'm dealing with. I have to understand about the ways in which any damage to them could impact my business. I have to understand which ones of them are most likely to be attacked. And then I also have to have a sufficient amount of information about these various components to know what it means to protect them. And so that style of research, those, that style of sort of segmented approach, makes it kind of a complex problem, but one that I can break down, right? And Agile's good for that as well, right? Agile helps me break down this problem and respond quickly to the changing nature of what I'm seeing. And it allows me to address these more atomically as individual elements, as opposed to just trying to solve it all with one big approach. So it does sound simple, and I think that risk is a great way to talk about it. It provides a nice, consistent terminology. But under the covers, there has to be some pretty good thinking done. One of the great things about Agile is it allows you to think creatively. So security to be effective in this environment can't just be responding to attacks, and it can't just be building walls around things. So we see agencies today who are using things like predictive analytics to look ahead to see the initial stages of someone poking around the corners, trying to find a way in. We see people taking an approach with using the data that they can find and external sources of data that people wouldn't ordinarily think about as being part of security to identify when something is happening or something has changed. Some anomaly exists. And so by taking advantage of not only traditional security technologies, but also leveraging things like big data and the capacity to understand other kinds of information, I can start making real and serious decisions about how to manage security better. And we see agency now, agencies now in the federal government who are actually taking this approach to decrease the likelihood they're going to have an event, to respond more quickly at the earliest stages of an event, and ultimately to decrease the costs associated with managing security by better understanding what those events are going to look like. There is a tapestry of information that's available to you uh, in today's modern, unstructured data, um, big data kind of world. So, Traditionally, if I was in security, what I would do is I would look for some system to get compromised and I'd go clean it up, figure out how it happened and try to clean that up too. In the next generation, right, which still isn't today, in the next generation, I would look for it as it was happening. So as the person is in the middle of my system doing badness, I could stop them before it was over. And that would be good. You know, a lot of the um, exploits we read about today, a lot of the breaches we read about today, we find out four months after they happened, right? So even that level of being able to interrupt it is new-ish. But predictive analytics, I've got so many different sources of data. I could theoretically know that you're in the building or not in the building. I could know that perhaps someone had written um, a tweet saying something negative. I could be looking at all sorts of different kinds of publicly available data to do a better job of knowing if something odd was happening. So as a very, you know, very tactical example, if I see something weird happening on your machine, and I also know that you're not in the building, very, very simple example. I know that I should stop that immediately. And weird may not mean like a break in. It may be, wow, look at that. Um, an unexpected login attempt that failed, one of them, in billions of messages, one of them going from this computer to this other system that it's never tried to log into before. It's anomalous. I know it looks kind of odd to me. 
So I'd automatically sort of think, as a security person, maybe I want to stop that, but I wouldn't be totally sure. But if at the same time I know it's your desktop system and you're not there, I'm pretty, pretty darn sure something's going on that shouldn't be going on there, and that machine may have been compromised. And so predictive analytics, you know, aside from being able to do sort of do even further ahead things, which says just looking at the swell of traffic and the types of systems and the, the types of responses that I'm getting, you know, knowing that maybe someday somebody's going to come look around. I can do very practical predictive analytics where I'm just predicting short-term things. I see the first steps of someone trying to do something. I see the first evidence of someone doing the reconnaissance function. You know, they haven't hurt anything really yet, but I can feel them. I can feel them sniffing around. I can see small things changing before the really bad things happen. And this is a very, very actionable thing that we can do now. You know, today using security intelligence with big data out of IBM, you can do that today. So I think, I think it's really exciting. As a security guy who's been doing this for 30 years, the idea that we can start applying what we sort of know in our guts when we're looking around at things and have the machines, which are a lot faster than we are and can look at a lot more data than we can, know those same things, it's really exciting. And I, th I think that that's the baseline for what's going to happen in predictive analytics.